Hi, my name is Maximilian Gierl. I'm an outdoor and adventure photographer. And in this episode, I'll show you what I bring when I stay overnight in the mountains, uh, which means I do a bivouac and I do it in a really, really minimal style. But uh, you can expand your list. It's just about how much stuff you want to carry. So let's jump into the video. So first of all, this video is not sponsored. I bought all of this stuff by myself. I didn't get any support, but um, yeah, it's just the gear I'm using. And so there are different um, companies which offer basically this, this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with those things. I will show you in the following video. Okay, so let's jump in there and just start maybe with the mat. And I use those ones from Exped. Um, I got like two different ones. The heavier one, the down mat um, M, 7M. Here it's pretty big, but it's, it's really good in terms of um, in terms of isolation to the to the to the ground which is in my opinion the most important thing the other one is the down mat ultralight 7m um, which is much lighter way smaller um, but for sure not that comfortable and it's not isolating that much as it does the the 7m the normal one and these ones are pretty handy um, because <clears throat> you can like put them out here out of the pack and there's usually like this this thing with it the, the blow blow sack basically and they're like there are different sizes of this mat and <clears throat> it's it's really well done it's it's really robust from the from the downside and you can sleep problem without any problems on on stony ground and high up in the mountains you can sleep on a glacier with this one so that's the mat the next one next thing what i bring is a is a sleeping bag and i i'm pretty happy with this from from sea to summit that's the spark series it's super warm it's a 800 down and it's super small. So I just show you how small you can pack this one. Oh, now you can see how big this is. That's so small and it's just perfect. So the next thing what I bring is a waterproof dry bag. It's super handy, it's small like this and for sure i'm not bringing a pillow in the night so i just like take off my jacket basically um probably not this kind of jacket maybe a down jacket and i do it just inside of this bag and so i've got my pillow so it's super good like this totally fine So the next thing what I bring at times, mostly I don't bring it, but if I want to eat something up there, I bring these small jet balls. This one's from MSR, they're different companies um, which produce them and they are pretty cool because right in there is a small um, bottle of gas and there's the, the whole um, cooking thing up there and there's as well a, a cup or a plate what you can use for eating and there's like a, a lock for upside to to make the water boil much faster and it's it's super easy to to basically mount it it's, uh, it's just like you put out this and then just like screw it up there like this and go like this fill in the water and if you close it 
it takes like one to two minutes to boil water which is pretty good and the best way for me to eat is like this small um, dried food it's it's pretty fine it, it, it tastes pretty good and yeah there are a lot of different uh, kind of uh, flavors and meals and yeah i recommend this this is from track and eat there are uh, two or three different companies which produce it and that's like for me the best uh, weight value for uh, for going high up and sleeping up there and you you need to eat something so it's pretty good and with this one you also can melt snow if you need water which makes things much easier because you won't carry up like three liters of water up the mountain if you have to gain like 2000 vertical meters so yeah it's a good option to stay hydrated and still um, don't have to carry that much further on you will bring some gloves this is really important i recommend to bring like two or three different pairs also in this case it makes sense to bring a thick one because it can get cold in the night and if you're shooting the milky way during the night you will get cold hands even in summer on a certain altitude it will get cold so bring gloves and the best thing is like a thin pair for for a first layer and then maybe a thick one to put it over it and you also can buy this small waterproof and windproof um, overlayers which you can put above it and they are really really priceless in these situations promise i promise you you will love them up there next i want to talk about tents i mean <laughs> the thing is if you go up there and you want to be work the interesting thing is not bringing a tent because sleeping right under the stars is really priceless it's amazing it's scary when you start with it but once you got into it you will love it and so <clears throat> you will need to look that you don't have too much wind like build a little wall with stones or whatever um, this is really important that you won't feel cold in the night and you will need to bring a down jacket that's for sure and maybe a, a long underwear under trousers like this is usually totally fine um, a wind jacket also is is really helpful to bring um, you can go for this really lightweight trail running wind jackets which are maybe like this big um, and they they do the job totally fine and um, for sure um, then you need to bring some some camera gear um, i bring usually like a, one camera like a, like a esrp or a canon 5d with uh, with maybe a 24 to 70 or a 15 to 35 and then i bring usually a, a telephoto lens with 70 to 200 and the extender which multiplies my zoom range um, two times so i can go from um, 140 to 400 um, which gives me quite a lot of options in photographing cool details last thing up um, you need to really respect the local regulations there are some simple rules the first rule is leave no trace just footsteps this is really really important the next thing is just take memories or photos nothing else so in the end just like don't leave anything up there bring your fucking garbage with you at home and put it in your bin at home don't leave it in the mountains please i really appreciate if you do that because i'm bringing so much trash back from the mountains like cigarettes like <clears throat> bottles of coca-cola and whatever and it, it really annoys me that people don't respect the the nature so please bring all your stuff you carried up there back down it went in your backpack and it can go back as well 
when you go down again. So that's a really, really important thing. The next thing is respect the local regulations. So it's not allowed to bivouac or to camp everywhere. There are local regulations and you can watch this on the map. Here in Switzerland there's a, there's a, a map. Um, it's called map.geo.admin.ch and there you see like if there's an if there's a protection area, you're not allowed to bivouac in certain places like national parks. And if you're not sure, just like take your phone and call the, the local tourism board. Maybe they will probably know where you can camp and where you aren't allowed. So that's it for me. That's what I bring for, for bivouacking high up in the mountains. It's really basic and I try to bring as less as possible because I have to carry it up all the mountain and usually I'm just on my own so <laughs> there's no one bringing up my gear um, and this is just like a that's my idea and my way I, to do it you can like adapt it to your style and I hope you uh, you could learn a little bit from me what I told you in this video and if you like this video and found it helpful please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and I see you in the next video.